Well, hello and welcome to the kitchen of the dollhouse. And what are we cooking up tonight, today, this evening, and this morning? Well, another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays. That's right. For October 22nd, the day of allure. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representation of the day of allure. Well, we have us the image, the single solitary image of a cherry laying on its side. That's right. It might be a black cherry. Who's to say? You can never tell with them woodcuts. But uh, any event, is that an adequate representation of the day of allure? Who's to say? You know, sometimes we can make a uh, connotation for why they might have chose that image as we get on with the reading. But it's not altogether all too important. No, what is important is it's October 22nd and it's someone's birthday today. So if it's your birthday, I just want to say happy birthday. That's what's important here. But if this finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever it might be, you're a busy individual. Well, I just hope you had a happy birthday. That's right. Now, for everyone else joining us randomly, more ideally to celebrate the October 22nd birthday, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before we dive in with the redirect, let's roll some dice. This is the Diecast birthday broadcast, so uh, we should live up to the namesake, shouldn't we? That's right. Make sure we get a good roll there, but we do it more importantly for synchronicity's sake. And here we rolled us a two and a three for a five. That's right. Two and a three for a five. Now, what is synchronicity? Some of you are probably wondering. Well, it's just you getting out in the world and then the universe show you it's with you on your path. And you do that by going after these numbers. That's right. You get out in the world and you just start looking for it. It's kind of like an agreed upon uh, way post, if you like, between you and the universe. Now, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled you. The intention is there, but uh, you can roll your own. It's probably ideal you take your own set of dice uh, to that end as well. Ascribe directional values to number sets. Also, figure out time limits with which to uh, go in those directions. Uh, but when you reach the uh, end of those time limits, will you stop, compose yourself, you look around for your numbers or any given sign therein. I mean, your numbers might just not pop up, who's to say, but you might see something anomalous. Hey, maybe you see somebody with a big old basket of cherries. Yeah, the day might even take on a theme like that. You might start seeing things like cherries popping up everywhere. No rhyme or reason, you know how it goes. Uh, but that said, maybe the old uh, number a 20, maybe it's a 23 bus pops up uh, on that corner that you're standing there. Well, that's a, that's a sign. Hop on there. Maybe you don't ride the bus all that often, if ever, but maybe you just so happen to have a perfect change in your pocket and you never carry coins. Things like that might just start to pop up. And, you know, you ride the bus for your designated time limit. Or, you know, maybe that's maybe that elapses, right? And you're still waiting to get off the bus. But maybe you notice, hey, somebody's wearing a hockey jersey on this bus. And it just so happens to have the number 23 on it. Well, you know what? Maybe you should wait until they get off and roll you the dice and you find your time limit and it gives you just enough time to put between you and them so that you can follow and see where they take you uh, until that time elapses. And who's to say they might just take you to some place that lines right up with the theme. Maybe it's, a, you know, a farmer's market. Cherries are like one for two or whatever, whatever cherries are. You never usually see them just by themselves, usually with a double there, but uh, who's to say? Maybe they're just selling them in singles. I know that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but hey, that's about synchronicity in a nutshell, me improvising with it. But so let's get on with your birthday read, shall we? I think you get the idea. Your month is October, your day, the 22nd. Your sign is 27 degrees Libra to zero degrees Scorpio of the Libra Scorpio cusp. So you're right on the bleeding edge there. You're riding the envelope. Uh, let's see here. And your quality and element is cardinal air. All right, let's get into it. October 22nd, the day of allure. The related themes of temptation, attraction, magnetism, and seduction run through almost every aspect of October 22 people's lives. Though they are usually the ones doing the attracting, they can also be swept away by their desire for another. In either case, an unavoidable crisis often arises when an October 22 person enters a romantic situation. This can be particularly difficult for a 
third person involved, and thus October 22 people are capable of arousing tremendous resentment and jealousy. Emotionally powerful, their presence generally upsets the status quo. And those born in this day are usually very much in control of their emotions and thus, if they choose to, able to manipulate the feelings of others with great aplomb and dexterity. To say that they are dangerous customers in relationships would be an understatement. In some born on this day, the undercurrent of wildness may be, un or may be concealed beneath an unassuming or cool exterior, but these submerged feelings are rarely revealed before anyone but close friends. And October 22 people do not specialize in displays of emotion, but rather have the ability to evoke them in others. Their projective powers are great. It is even possible for them to just enter a room and change the energy of a gathering. Of course, those born in this day must be extremely guarded in exercising such powers, not only for the sake of others, but also because this energy can backfire, ultimately damaging themselves. Generally, the capacity of October 22 people to hurt outweighs their vulnerability to be hurt, and they have a way of protecting themselves, not always by aggressive or defensive behavior, but sometimes through actually being more considerate, decent, or caring than the other person. Thus, if a relationship were to end, not only would they be the ones sorely missed, but also the ones with a free conscience. And most October 22 people have a decidedly rebellious streak in them, but once their rebellion has been fully expressed, usually in their younger years, they can later find themselves comfortably ensconced in a conservative social niche, particularly after their early 40s, it says in parentheticals. And perhaps they will wonder how they got there. October 22 people will meet their match in very balanced individuals who are able to deflect or ignore their seductive vibrations. And before such individuals, they will invariably bend the knee and perhaps submit emotionally. An important lesson for October 22 people to learn is how to handle seductive power in themselves and others, so that they may ultimately find happiness and love that is open and unconditional. Well, all right, quite the focused day, albeit dynamic also. Uh, let's see, let's dive into some notes I take. I like to provide a little bit of a commentary on the breakdown there. So let's get into it here. October 22, the day of allure. Related themes of temptation, attraction, magnetism, and seduction concern almost every aspect of October 22 people's lives. Is that so? All right. Quite the list. And you're usually the one doing the attracting to that end. Uh, more importantly, or perhaps uh, that's not as good as it sounds. Who's to say? It could be quite the burden if you don't want people coming in at you, right? Or if you've already been swept away by someone you do care for, as it were, right? Uh, uh, you don't want it or you've already been swept away. Okay, right. But interestingly, the reading claims uh, that these traits can upset the status quo. And I suppose that makes a lot of sense, right? Concerning the matters of the heart, uh, especially in romantic situations where a third party is concerned. And I'd argue this doesn't seem like an isolated phenomena uh, in my mind, as it could be said of anyone entering into a romantic relationship and there being uh, someone else there kind of getting the axe, if you like, because uh, that's not specific to uh, one day in the year, right? A person inhabiting one day in the year. Uh, but I don't want to poo-poo it either, right? Because it could be a very real dynamic uh, specific to this day uh, to the extent that it merits mention. All right. It's also uh, such a specific, uh, such a specific experience uh, to elaborate on that to dismiss, dismiss it outright would be rather myopic. All right. Especially if the people born are on this day are in fact adept at manipulating feelings with great dexterity uh, to result 
in this kind of outcome. So I, I just think it's really interesting that this is something they focused on. Um, it's not, nothing comes even close to being that uh, focused on in all the other days, even if this kind of thing gets mentioned. It's usually just in passing, right? Uh, so even the connotation of being a bad customer uh, in such capacity speaks volumes, all right? And couple that with an undercurrent of wildness hidden by, beneath a cool exterior and the ability to change a room's energy just by entering it, the idea of people having superpowers seems very real in my mind. Uh, in fact, I'm almost glad that this can backfire uh, if used irresponsibly. All that said, I also like this element of your social evolution being brought up. And it's, that's after your rebellious nature is additionally conveyed. Uh, to include mention of balanced individuals being immune to your seductive vibrations, uh, the likes of which may cause you yourself, as the reading claims, to bend the knee. All right. So there's positives and there's negatives. There's reconciliation, evolution, and a proposition of what to look forward to. And it rounds out a very interesting, albeit seemingly otherworldly, birthday breakdown. I said I found this very interesting. So uh, with that being said about the birthday breakdown, let's dive in with your numbers and your planets. All right, those born on the 22nd of the month are ruled by the number four as two plus two equals four and by the planet Uranus, uh, which is both erratic and explosive. The added influence of Venus and Pluto, the rulers of Libra and Scorpio respectively, underlines the seductive magnetic quality October 22 people bring to relationships, particularly a sexual ones, it says. The number four typically represents rebellion, idiosyncratic beliefs, and a desire to change the rules, particularly true for October 22 people. And since 22 is a double number, uh, those born on the 22nd of the month may be fascinated with twins, coincidences, symmetry, or reflections. Boy, it would have been cool if we had rolled some doubles, right? And sent you to jail there. Doesn't always happen, though. All right, that's been your numbers and your planets. So let's dive in with the notes here. All right, the notes for your numbers and planets. The number four, the planet Uranus. All right, for uh, another ostens for an ostensibly shared kinship. All right, and while I don't see myself as alluring or uh, really sharing any of the so-called powers it mentioned you have. I really appreciated this day's breakdown. I gravitated towards it somehow. And it might have been because of the number four there. Uh, this shared rulership uh, only further cements that for me. All right. So you have Uranus for erratic and explosive behavior. And a lot of times those qualities vacillate between argumentative and uh, another one I can't recall because I got erratic and explosive too. Uh, but uh, the planets Venus and Pluto for you with your seductive magnetics, it says there. So that's what kind of sets you apart, I suppose. Uh, the number four for your rebelliousness and idiosyncratic desires. And what with the number 22 in particular, a propensity for attraction uh, to coincidences, symmetry and reflections. Uh, the day just keeps getting more interesting, if you ask me. Uh, just don't forget to actually do some reflecting, all right? It seems uh, like you go a little buck wild if we go by the breakdown there. And uh, the number 22 says you're there for reflection. So, hey, just be mindful, I'd say. And surprisingly, they don't really dive in much with the numerology. And so they kind of did a little bit here. And, you know, they did very minute amount, but it's volumes more than a lot of other folks get. Uh, but in any event, that's been your numbers and your planets. So let's dive in with your tarot. That's right, one of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical ideologies, at least by my mind. Uh, but uh, if it's that way with you too, hey, we don't need to take it home with us, start dealing out cards to uh, decide our every life's whim. But it's interesting, it's in the book, it's your birthday, might as well expand our horizons, see what it has to say. So let's get to it. The 22nd card of the major arcana is the fool who in several versions of the tarot is shown blithely stepping over the edge of a cliff. And some interpretations picture him as a foolish man who has given up reason. Others, a highly spiritualized being free of material 
considerations. Positive meanings include renouncing resistance and following instincts freely. Foolishness, impulsiveness, and annihilation are the negative aspects. The highly evolved fool has followed life's path, experienced its lessons, and become one with his or her vision. All right. Hey, what I have to say about your tarot? It's a bit of a copy-paste job. They didn't really personalize it for you, but here and we're there. That's what I'm here for, to be a little redundant and maybe expand a bit. So let's get into it. The Fool, a once-a-month card for following instincts freely, or that highly spiritualized being, I'm assuming, uh, and uh, renouncing resistance, all right? The foolish man giving up on reason. Uh, at least those are connotations I'm assuming there. Uh, they do seem to link up a little bit. Foolishness, impulsive actions, and annihilation are the negative aspects. So rise above the material, experience life's lessons, uh, and become one with your vision. All right, I'm sure that you're not so shallow as to only focus on breaking up romantic relationships and being alluring, all right? One has to hope that there's a little bit more depth to than that. Uh, any event that being said a little bit of a copy paste job like I mentioned but I'd say the breakdown uh, and this tarot thing uh, between the two makes it a rather apt card one seems to kind of inform the other if you like so any event that's been your tarot let's move on to your health all right your health those born on October 22 are generally concerned with their physical appearance therefore they should take some care with their diet both to avoid weight problems and to keep their skin looking healthy. They are also somewhat vulnerable, they rather are also somewhat vulnerable where their internal abdominal organs, immune and circulatory systems are concerned. Infections should be treated promptly. Physically active, October 22 people usually operate at a high metabolic rate, so lack of exercise may not be of great concern. Nonetheless, they should regularly test their strength and stretch their muscles in order to maintain athletic, uh, athleticism. And generally attracted to good food and drink, October 22 people must be aware of eating in excess of animal fat and sugar and keep in mind the harmful effects of alcohol on the stomach, liver, and the kidneys. All right, very diet focused with the health here, but not altogether. What I have to say here, generally we're concerned with your appearance, uh, which seems to follow in theme with other Libras, specifically the latter ones there. Uh, concerns of diet are rather generic. Um, concerns with internal organs is in line with other Libras. They really drill down on focusing on taking care of your kidneys and your, your intestines and the lower back. And they kind of kept that through line going. Uh, how you protect said things, I'm not entirely sure, outside of diet and drinking lots of water. Uh, well, maybe pad things up with some ace bandages. I don't know. <laughs> Event. Uh, but in dealing with infections and not needing to worry about exercise because of a high metabolism, that's new and very specific. So maybe take note of that. Though I wouldn't just lean in on that and avoid doing exercise, right? Uh, and this goes for the mention of testing your strength and stretching. I don't think they've ever said that before uh, or written it otherwise. Yeah. So uh, avoiding sugar and alcohol and caring for the internal organs, as I said, that's a labor thing. Uh, but animal fat, I believe, is new. So that's interesting. Uh, what else we got here? So literal food for thought. All right. So that's been your health. Let's dive in with some advice. All right. Some advice. Do not abuse your projective powers. Act with kindness and consideration. Uh, show your real feelings, and you don't always have to control the situation. All right, real quick, fast, down and dirty with the advice, but I'd say it still has a lot of value. All right, don't abuse your projective powers. All right, act with kindness and consideration. I think it should go without saying why. All right, nobody wants to be a jerk or be seen as one. 
well, I don't, maybe in your younger days you're okay with that but i think as you grow and experience things you might find time to let go of those kinds of things uh, especially if you rile up a third individual in a relationship setting uh, collateral damage if you like which might spell that previously mentioned annihilation to be aware of and you know you never know who's crazy all right so be mindful uh, which I think speaks to not always having control of a situation. All right, that's what they said. All right, what else do I have to, have to write here? I had to move it over to the book because I ran out of space on the page uh, to be a blast from it there. I'd argue they mentioned showing your feelings lines up with a spiritual evolution kind of vein there, or at least as an integral step to take note if you want to go that route, to be something more than just uh, gravitating towards the physical. Uh, I mentioned the fool does that. The highly spiritualized fool. Hey, get after that spiritual evolution there. But you got to abandon some of the more, I don't know, a shallow things, if you like. And even that's been your advice, so let's take the energy down just a hair and move on to your meditation. All right, your meditation. Here we go. Magic and psychic manipulation are potentially dangerous practices and do not have much to do with true spirituality. I like that. Very good. All right. Interesting thought. Let's oh, one more time. Let's get into it. Magic and a psychic manipulation are potentially dangerous practices and do not have much to do with true spirituality. All right, that's your meditation. It's your birthday, your meditation. I'm not going to try to break it down or throw some spin on it. That's just for you. All right, your meditation in the can, as it were. Let's move on to your strengths and weaknesses. That's right. Let's do the work. Let's find out, as if we didn't already know. Can you guess what they are? Oh, here we go. Your strengths, you're magnetic, you're charming, and you're exciting. Ooh, all right. Those are, those are interesting. All right. But your weaknesses, all right, let's do the work. What do we got here? Your weaknesses, you're disruptive, you're unbalanced, and you're controlling. Ooh, ooh. You know, I don't think they mentioned balance in the read. I don't think I mentioned it either, but balance has been a through line theme with these later Libra, latter Libras as well. So be mindful. Get yourself balanced. And all those weaknesses are things that can be improved upon. Disruptive, unbalanced, and controlling. We dealt with a lot of that in the advice, didn't we? All right, so that has been your strengths and your weaknesses. Let's dive in with those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, one thing I like to do is focus on figuring out our passions. See, not only are we able to see who shares your company, but we can see what put them in the book. Got them famous. Might not have been their passions that got them there, but ostensibly maybe we can take a little inspiration if we're having trouble figuring them out for ourselves. See, I get out in the world and meet folks, ask them what they do. More importantly, if they like it, a lot of times they don't. And I think it's just because folks haven't had the time to put into work to figure out those things. Because it does take time. It does take work. Especially if you want to figure out a way to make money with it. Or to make it your uh, primary focus in life. Outside of some career you've got a zero passion for. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to maybe take some inspiration from those who share your company and that's and if anything it's just interesting to see that too all right so let's get into those born on this day we have sarah bernhardt the lay divine sarah french stage actress and called the greatest of her generation she was also a director we also have franz Liszt, a, a hungarian composer virtuoso pianist a dynamic superstar and retired to become the most important teacher of piano. We also have uh, Ter uh, Timothy Leary. I was going to say Terry for some reason. Timothy Leary, the LSD experimenter and 60s guru. We have Bobby Seale, a militant political activist and Black Panther co-founder with Huey Newton and a, uh, prosecuted and convicted as a Chicago 8 member. We also have Robert uh, Rauschenberg, a painter, Doris Lessing, a writer of The Golden Notebook, uh, D uh, Derek Jacoby, a stage, uh, British stage, TV, and film actor, 
We also have Catherine Deneuve, who was a French film actress and model. Joan Fontaine, film actress. Brian Boitano, the U.S. Olympic gold medal winning figure skating champion. He had balance now, didn't he? That's right. Or else he wouldn't have got that gold. <laughs> All right. See what you can get with balance. That's right. We also have Jeff Goldblum, the film actor. Mei Lan Fang, Chinese actor. A uh, George W. Beadle, a U.S. Nobel Prize winning genetic biochemist. Doris Previn, an actress, a songwriter, and wife to Andre Previn. Uh, we have Annette Funicello, a film actress and partner of Frankie Avalon. I don't know why they're putting people down as uh, famous for being the partner of someone else. They should live up in their own right, right? Uh, Lord Alfred Douglas, Oscar Wilde's lover, it says, and British royalty. See, and he's known as being partners with someone else. Okay. Uh, Joachim uh, Chisano, uh, Mozambique president. Uh, we have Hollis Caswell, an education professor and advisor to the World Book Encyclopedia, and Constance Bennett, a film actress, and finally, William Hanley, a playwright. So we had us a lot of writers, entertainers, uh, partners of other people who were ostensibly famous. <laughs> so I don't know, hinge yourself on to someone else, right? Who's balanced, right? Or uh, what was the other thing? People who are... Uh, yeah, balance. That's right. That's who uh, diffuses your seductive powers. All right. <laughs> Send yourself on to someone balance there. Maybe that's your passion. I don't know. It doesn't seem to make any sense. But what else do we have? We had people who riled other folks up, that rebellious nature they mentioned. So I know you may not have taken any kind of inspiration for passions you do or don't have, but uh, you know, it's a tall ask, tall order. But um, hey, maybe just hearing as much and, and, and seeing that somebody out there is trying to drum that up in you will we'll, you know, serve to fuel the fire, if you like. But in any event, it's just interesting to see who shares your birthday also. So ultimately, uh, with me getting through those born on this day, that essentially uh, wraps up your birthday read. Except to say, your season is fall. Your sign, once again, is Libra of the Libra Scorpio cusp. And your quality element, quality and element, rather, is cardinal air. And this has been October 22nd. The Day of Allure, from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking up a copy. It makes a great coffee table book if you're in the, uh, uh, in the position of needing to entertain and you're not very good at breaking the ice, though, you know, The Day of Allure, who needs to, right? But maybe you got more people than you, than you can possibly focus on or maybe you know at least two others because of that third wheel hey this is going to get the party started get the conversation flowing uh for better or for worse if you can't do that on your own <laughs> all right in any event that's not what's important here what's important is wishing you a happy birthday so once again happy birthday and for everyone else who joined us randomly or ideally to celebrate hey i hope you enjoyed yourselves and you join us for your birthday read but lest we forget your daily numbers. That's right. Get out there. Let the universe show you it's with you on your path. Feel and see the magic. Uh, hopefully it's so palpable you can almost touch it. But just remember, as per the meditation, it doesn't necessarily mean a spiritual evolution. That's right. You got to properly apply it. That's right. Uh, so any of them, once again, happy birthday and take care of yourselves. Especially them kidneys there and stretch them muscles. <laughs> and I'll make sure you affirm your strength. That's right. All right. Take care.